Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on the Fair Compare weekly video podcast. I want to thank you for watching us today and uh, we're going to talk a little bit today on this podcast about a variety of news topics that are out there. One of them is uh, an announcement from American Airlines and uh, what they call no frills seats. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what frills are. We'll talk a little bit (laughs) about that. Um, You know, it's also time to escape some advice uh, to one of my favorite places on the planet or at least a region of the world, which is the Caribbean. Um, And we'll we'll talk about how we actually pronounce that. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Um, And uh, also uh, some travel assumptions uh, that can come back to bite you. I think we have an article on that, as well as take some questions for some customers as well. And uh, joining me today to talk about these particular topics is our editor from the site at faircompare.com, Ann McDermott. Hey, Ann, how are you today? I am good. How are you? It's, I am uh, doing great. We've got so much to talk about, so we might as well just jump in. This whole American thing, it sounds like they're going to reduce prices, at least for yeah, some Yeah, you know, this was an interesting story that came up. Actually, this came up during uh, an investor call where investors um, actually were mm. g- doing the quarterly call for American Airlines and their CEO, Scott Kirby, brought up the fact that Americans going to be start offering uh, early next year what they call no frills fares. And the main reason for this is to compete with Spirit's ultra cheap fares. Now, Spirit Airlines, Frontier or what they call ultra low cost airlines that would also include Allegiant, Allegiance in typically uh, some smaller cities um, uh, around the U.S. But they have some of these crazy low fares. Uh, for example, and I was looking the other day, I had to go last minute to New York. Or at least I thought I did. The, the trip ended up getting canceled. It was a little over $900 on American wow. Airlines nonstop. Wow. On Spirit Airlines, it was $135 <laughs> nonstop. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the way Spirit does some of their stuff stuff. But if I had a gone, I would have gone on spirit. <laughs> and that's what uh, Americans trying to fight against, right? Which is the fact that they're getting undercut and American has to keep their planes completely full. And I know, you know, fuel prices are down dramatically and that's causing some windfall uh, profits with the airlines. And that combined with fees definitely are helping the airlines be super profitable right now. But that may not always be the case. We may not always have $40 a barrel oil. We may have a hundred dollar barrel oil. And this is certainly something they're worried about, um, sort of spirit scooping up some of their nonstop travelers. There was a couple things, and when I was listening to the call, I didn't listen to the whole thing, uh, but I saw some of the highlights afterward that I was reading through. Uh, a couple things that were said by the American CEO were that one in 10 of American passengers actually fly more than once a year. I thought that was absolutely crazy. That means 90% of all travelers on America within one American Airlines within one year, the world's biggest airline, by the way, only flew once that year. Huh. That just shows so, me that there's not a lot of loyalty out there. <laughs> you, well, you have I, your best 10% yeah. of customers that fly a lot. Those are your business customers. Those are people in your hub cities that are flying a lot in nonstops. And that's where Spirit's making some inroads, for example. So I don't expect a bunch of these no frills, uh, cheaper affairs. And by the way, let's talk a little bit about what no frills means. That means last boarding group, middle seat, last row of the plane, completely non-refundable, non-changeable ticket. Maybe they charge you more for, you know, a check bag. Maybe they reduce the leg room in the back. That's what's going to be the product. Well, uh, apparently, uh, Delta has been doing this with their basic economy for, uh, yeah, since 12, gosh, yeah. I guess since the spring. And it's, uh, it seems to be working for them. And it's... Um, it, it's interesting what you say. Yeah, you, you, um, you still get a carry-on for free, but as you pointed out, you cannot board early. You cannot even pay to board early. And the seat selection, uh-uh, no. I guess you are assigned a seat like at check-in time or, or at the very exactly, last minute. Yeah. And you don't get to pick it. You can't change it. And you can, yeah, there's it, like, it's totally, uh, you know, you can't change anything. Yeah, so it's basically, it's trying to mimic to some degree the pricing model uh, of Spirit Airlines, but only on a selected few seats, only on a selected few routes. And I think that that was the key, you know, the overlap 
some of the questions were how, you know, how much does spirit overlap with American somewhere in the five to 20% range, depending on who you believe. Uh, in the case of Delta, only in the five to 10% range. So I think this is probably more of a problem for the world's biggest airline now that US Airways and American are completely combined. Well, here's the thing that I don't quite get. Uh, just, you know, Delta's uh, basic economy fares are cheaper. Right. But they are not uh, spirit cheap. They are not frontier cheap. Yeah, and I think that that's still part of that, you know, that branding. In some cases, they do match completely. I've seen some matching, but they are cheaper. Um, and and by the way, you don't get any loyalty points with those fares at all. We've seen that actually Ooh. with Air Canada with some of its fares in wow. Canada for a long time. That's almost been well, about probably seven or eight years or even longer where they actually had a fare you could buy that you didn't get loyalty miles or points on. Um, so yep. look. The airline's job, and they're doing a good job of it, as attested by their financial results, is to make as much money as they can on every square inch of every one of their planes. <laughs> and the bean counters have have figured out every possible thing they could charge a fee for, bundles, packages. We're going to see this all. I noticed there was a headline today that Ryanair says that they're going to be the Amazon of travel. <laughs> so, you know, I think airlines uh, liken themselves to Amazon nowadays. It's not just about flying. It's about everything else. It wasn't so long ago when uh, we talked about the Walmartization of uh the world, but uh, now I guess the the newer thing is Amazon, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, who yeah. wants to be Walmart? Unless you're flying drones, which it sounds like Walmart will be flying drones now along with Amazon. So pretty soon we're going to, you know, I thought in Texas it was really bad in the summer when we had mosquitoes, but apparently we're just going to have drones going around everywhere. Well, I, you know, I, I, in some ways I think I'm the passenger that they're looking for. I don't fly all that much. And I don't have any particular loyalty, mainly because I do have a choice. I can uh, fly a whole bunch of airlines from where I live. And, uh, you know, as you always say, compare fares to find the cheapest because it's always different. You never, you know, I have I have uh, not gone with Spirit no. because it wasn't the cheapest. And I've gone with JetBlue or Virgin America or sometimes even the legacy carriers. But, um, gosh, I, I, I think they'd... I don't know, get sort of tired of completely frillless flights, you know, but we'll see. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, you know, I have a list that I keep at home of all the different airlines I've flown over the years. And um, that that particular list is very lengthy. I think it's in the six or seven dozen range. <laughs> um, and sure. um, look, you know, everything's different. Pricing models are different. I like to actually go on those products at least once just to check them out. Um, you know, so that when I do talk about them, I actually have some uh, some actual experience on them. I have a um, so I haven't gotten. There's over 500 uh, commercial airlines worldwide, so I still have a ways to go. <laughs> but again, we'll, you know. <laughs> Whether it's an airline or different products or different types of products, you know, there's no frill fares. This is only a good thing, right? I mean, cheaper fares means more people are going to be able to fly at the price that they want to. That's a good thing. I just don't think this is going to be on a humongous number of seats. So it's not going to change the dynamic very much. And, you know, one of the things, and you know, sort of skipping over the American no frills story is, will they have these cheap prices to, uh, you know, some of these nonstops uh, that they have to the Caribbean uh, out of Miami, for example, they, they have several out of Dallas. You know, you've got Southwest Airlines mm -hmm. opening up a, not, a large terminal at, at Houston Hobby Airport in Houston that's going to be flying into the Caribbean. And, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's in my top two or three things uh, to do is to, to, to go to a variety of places in the Caribbean um, and escape and get away, especially when it's a little bit colder outside here in Dallas. We're kind of luxury here in Dallas. It's only cold for a couple months, but I do love the Caribbean. My daughter... It basically requires a Caribbean beach each year. So she's she's the heavy lobbyist in our family. Well, have I got good news for you, uh, at least out of the Northwest. I, I'm sure you have seen Norwegian Air has got these deals for $99 to uh, a couple of different uh, French Caribbean or Caribbean islands. <laughs> and it, it's a lovely deal. And then I see uh, JetBlue today has got deals to... Um, NASA in the Bahamas and a, a couple of other places, but they're like $67 one way out of, um, out of Washington, D.C., and I think it was $99 out of New York. 
I mean, the deals are out there. Yeah, no, and as long as you stay away from Christmas, you can find some really good deals. Now, if you go to Google and type in Fair Compare Space uh, uh, Caribbean, you'll come to our Caribbean homepage. And um, you'll see all these deals listed, several articles along those lines. Um, you know, I'm looking at the one right now out of Dallas um, as we speak in Montego Bay at 460. That's a great price. Aruba at $413. Um, San Juan, always inexpensive out of Dallas, but depending on what city you're in, um, you have a great list of the, uh, the deals into the Caribbean uh, locations. And, and when you can go, when you click on it, you'll be able to see a calendar of exactly the price points you want. So come check out our new Caribbean uh, page. Just type in Fair Compare Space Caribbean uh, if you want to check it out. And it's got things like 10 Caribbean beaches to make your heart <laughs> flutter. I want my heart to flutter, <laughs> I sure do. I have flutter at a good price. <laughs> Mine's already fluttered several times. I have a couple uh, specific ones that I, I love. I love Cayman. That beach on Cayman um, is one of the best. And then, you know, I pick Aruba in that top five category of beaches around the world. So uh, Caribbean definitely is on my once a year list, at least until my gra daughter graduates from high school, at least. <laughs> Uh, let's talk now about uh, people that are traveling maybe to the Caribbean and maybe they run into problems that they didn't anticipate because they made assumptions. One cannot yeah. make assumptions. Yeah. The one thing I love about video podcasts is the fact that really what we're trying to do is help people not make the same mistakes we've made or yeah. in many cases that I've made and I've traveled a lot and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I've made lots of mistakes and, you know, I've made lots of assumptions over the years and I've talked to a lot of people too that have made these mistakes and we've researched uh, a lot of these assumptions and mistakes. So I love, you know, talking about sort of these top five lists of things that, um, you know, that you should not assume. And, um, the number one that had just happened to me the other night, and I got stuck in uh, a storm mm -hmm. that was coming into Dallas, uh, Wichita Falls. We ended up landing in Wichita Falls and hanging out there for three or four hours. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing like a like a vending machine dinner <laughs> yeah. at one a.m. in the morning. Uh, but one of the things that happened was is that a bunch of people actually missed the out, the ongoing flight from Wichita Falls where we were hanging out because they decided to change the time of re-releasing the flight. So just remember when your flight is delayed and or canceled, well, in some cases, um, you know, if it's canceled. Clearly that's not the problem, but if it's delayed, that's just a, that's just a notation, um, that you should still head out to the airport, but it's just going to have a delay. They may un undelay that flight. So you gotta be really careful about that. And if it is canceled and you know, you're like stuck, don't think, oh, well, I'll just get one of their free hotel vouchers or, you know, a voucher <laughs> for the free food. Um, yeah, now, you, some, some airlines, as I understand it, some airlines do. will do it, but they don't have to. And most don't. Yeah, in Europe, there's a passenger bill of rights, and there's a lot of that that goes on, which includes food and, uh, and and places to stay. We don't have that in the United States. If Mother Nature's involved, and by the way, guess who gets to decide who's involved in the cancellation? The airline. So they're the judge and the jury. Uh, yeah. So in this particular case, some of them do have vouchers. Some of them have discount coupons. They'll give away in some cases. They're going to try to rebook you on the next flight. That could be a week later, by the way. So you're going to end up having to talk with a human. Um, I, I noticed one of my friends just recently called me and said, hey, my flight just got canceled. I'm rebooked for three weeks from now, <laughs> and, but I got to be there tomorrow. So, um, you know, so you do have to end up talking with folks, uh, but there's not going to be any freebies. And by the way, when I did get to the airport uh, at DFW that night, um, there were cots everywhere and people sleeping oh. in the aisles. So those people did not get hotel vouchers. <laughs> well, I was... Uh, at a cancel, it was a canceled or vastly delayed flight. I can't remember which, but it was uh, the the gate agent was passing out uh, vouchers to people, and apparently it was uh, for like this special price for a hotel room. And I was watching this. I wasn't taking part because my flight was going to go somewhere else, or I was uh, working on some other uh, scenario for myself. And I I looked at that and I thought, huh, I see. And then I just on a hunch, I called the the hotel that was giving this special price. And I didn't say I was, you know, a stuck airline passenger. I just said, 
how much for a room tonight? And it was exactly the same price as the special price on the hotel voucher. So these folks weren't getting anything at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I agree with you, too. I think another thing that uh, people assume that security will never be bad, I, I, and I'll have to admit, I'm the worst about this. My wife and I have this argument all the time. She wants me to get the Uber like an hour before I want to get the Uber that goes to the airport. <laughs> I'm with her. Um, she, she likes to be early. I'm like, let's just slide in. I'm so used to traveling and sliding into the airport and going through security. Now I have a pre-check and I know where all the particular pre-check locations are at the airport, depending on what terminal I'm going in. Uh, but don't, always assume, especially during the holiday period, that security won't be too bad. We've seen some ridiculous lines and computer glitches and whatnot uh, when this occurs. So it, the one thing that I would do to mitigate this, if you fly more than a couple times a year, join PreCheck. It's $85 for five years. That's $17 a year. It's the best $17 you'll ever spend. It saved my life. Well, it saved me from missing my flight one time when I was just, I was randomly selected for pre-checked. Stupid me, didn't even look at my boarding pass. But if, if you are randomly pre-checked, look at the boarding pass, upper left-hand corner, it'll say T-S-A-P-R-E. And that means you get to go to the short line. But but why wait for random selection? Guess what, Ann? No no more random TSA pre-checks as of a couple months ago. So you're out if you're not in, supposedly. They, they are saying that they will no longer randomly pre-check people. Uh, this happened a couple of weeks ago. So they Did they actually randomly pre-check you? Yep. You're not supposed to be. There's been kind of an uproar over that because people that are paying for it are saying, why, sh why should I get it if, if I paid for it and they didn't? So supposedly they're not supposed to do that. So you and I are going to have to have a little article discussion on writing about this if see if they're still randomly doing it. Yeah, I, I'll, I will find out. But I'll tell you, it saved my life. And I, I, it may have been the final kick in the pants to get me to go and do the little pre-check thing. It's a hassle, 85 bucks. You do have to go take a – how long was your interview for, for TSA pre-check? Because I think mine was 38 seconds. Uh, I have not done this, Rick. Oh, you have not. So you have to see. <laughs> no. Have you even – oh, I thought, you, I thought you were going to get an appointment to do that. Uh, I am. Sometime. <laughs> a couple of other things that people assume, um, you know, an area of non-refundable tickets and change fees um, and non-refundable tickets are always have some exceptions in them. Hey, look, you know, when you buy a non-refundable ticket, you better understand uh, that most of these now there are some exceptions like Southwest Airlines. You're looking at a two or three hundred dollar change fee, depending on if it's domestic or international. And there's a bunch of other rules around that as well. So you just got to be careful about quote unquote, and non-refundable tickets have some exceptions. For example, you know, I have a doctor's visit or I had a flat tire on the way to the airport, for example. That's, yeah, uh, you, you better have a really good excuse uh, from what I've heard. And in fact, uh, sometimes a death is not a good enough excuse uh, no, but, no. Yeah. In fact, for the person that has the ticket that has a death is not a good excuse no. <laughs> to get your money back in some cases. So we've, we've written about that in the yes, past as we well. Have. So look, it's non-refundable. You know, I, I would almost treat it like a Rolling Stone ticket. If you don't go to the concert, you're pretty much not going to make it. Uh, other, other uh, assumptions people make is that the, their, the size and weight limits apply to checked bags only. I know you that's know right. personally that that's <laughs> not the case. That's true. No, they've had baggage police and they're, sometimes they'll weigh them. They have the templates that are out there. Sometimes they'll actually force you to do something, even if it fits in the template. Um, you know, I've had a few tussles with the bag, the quote unquote baggage police, right? So that's like giving the, the, the bully in your school mm -hmm. access to uh, stopping you. So in some cases, so they, they love to do that. Um, and this is going to be, I, I think this is going to be a big, big deal during the holidays when they're trying to get, you know, all these crowded planes boarded, boarded quick, quick. 
uh, watch out for your carry on. Make sure. Uh, I was just small. on a radio show this morning with uh, one of the the radio show hosts, and he was talking about how he just saw you know people coming in all the time with huge bags that clearly yeah. wouldn't make it yeah. because there's no baggage police. They don't really care about actually carrying it on when they call at the beginning and say, "Hey, would you like to go ahead and put your bag in the hold for free?" By the way, yeah. and then go ahead and do that. So as long as they don't really. Um, you know, if the rules are spottily, um, you know, managed and, and do that, people are going to continue to try to, to, to flip around the rules because it, 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 look, it's $50, $50 is a lot of money. And it's like, uh, when they, people assume that there's always room for a carry on your, you know, no, there's <laughs> not always room for a carry on. Hey, we got those new big bins coming on those airplanes. There's always going to be room, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have many a time I have wasted all my, my foot room because I've squashed my bag in, under the seat in front of me because, I, I mean, sometimes there's just no room. And frankly, at the end of a flight, I do not want to go from my seat, you know, somewhere in the middle all the way to the back of the plane to – retrieve exactly. my bag. Might as well check it. If you're not in the first boarding group, you're you're basically out of luck on many in many cases. So if you're not in the first half of people that board the plane, many times uh, you're going to end up gate checking your bag. So just be aware of that. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of questions. Well, we have uh, two questions today from Fair Compare folks that want to hear what Rick Sini has to say about various things. And uh, one is from, and I please, uh, is it Tamuel from Belfast? Yeah, Northern I Island? guess it's Tamuel, yeah. Uh, they ask, how do I find the cheapest flight to Las Vegas and the best season to travel to Las Vegas with the best deals for staying in the hotels on the Strip? Tamiel really wants to go yeah, from I Ireland think... to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we will help you actually get to Vegas. Now, you know, as far as Vegas is, is concerned, you know, I'm not a hotel expert, but I've been to Vegas many times. Uh, I admit it. I raised my hand here on the video podcast. I love to play poker. Um, but uh, the, um, you know, getting to Vegas from a seasonal standpoint is sort of the, the slow season is summertime because it's about 180 degrees. You could fry an egg on, on the strip there on any of the streets. Yeah. That's the slowest time. Certainly the peak times are when it's a little bit cooler outside. There's lots of golf that occurs in the spring uh, uh, as well as in the fall. Um, certainly winter time is also, uh, you know, and there's certain <laughs> dates that are just crazy, like uh, Super Bowl time. New Year's. Um, for example. New Year's. New Year's. Um, so, you know, certainly if you want to just go to Vegas and you're going to be inside the entire time and you're not trying to sample golf and, uh, you know, some of the other things, then summertime is perfect time to go. That's uh, when you'll find the cheapest deals. Now, more importantly, what you have to do, whether you're flying, really it's flying into any city, including Vegas, is you know, you have to fly at the edge of seasons. So like, for example, one person on August the 23rd is going to pay $250 more than a person that leaves on August the 25th, for example, because there's a break in the seasonal pricing right there in that last week in August, for example. There's another break in price in mid-October. There's price breaks in May. So the key to getting the cheapest prices uh, in there is to, to go on the right side of that, uh, especially during those peak times uh, and travel. Certainly sales occur all the time. We've seen, I've seen plenty of sales into Vegas. Actually, if you're coming from Europe, there are some charter flights into Vegas, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive they have some, uh, you know, out of Belfast, but we do see them out of Germany, for example, which are really inexpensive. I got a feeling they have them out of Dublin. Um, so it depends on whether or not they have some charter activity into Las Vegas as well. Uh, so you, you might want to check that out as well. Sometime that charter activity is is uh, tied up with hotels and packages as well. So you want to check that out as well. As far as hotels are concerned, you have such a wide range. You have the old mm. downtown hotels and you have the strip. You also have hotels that are in sort of what I call the surrounding areas. If you're a golfer uh, near the lakes uh, there. So depending on where you want to go, you can find a range of hotel rooms from well under $100 all the way up to five or $600, depending on what your range is. Well, it sounds like what you're saying is uh, coming from Europe, uh, traveling to the U.S. is a, a perfect time, winter time, except, you know, avoid the major holidays like uh, Christmas, New Year's, 
Right. And Thanksgiving then, um, also can be pretty busy too. It's more of a peak time for Las Vegas in the in the winter time. However, if they stay during the week or, you know, make their stay from like, you know, midweek to midweek, something like that, or, you know, if, right. if avoiding the weekend seems key because that's when a lot of locals go. Hotel to, rates know, also have, you know, sort of pricing around Thursday, Fridays and Saturdays and difference in pricing, big bit differences in pricing on certain weekends or weekdays. You want to check that. Also, be sure and not go in some weeks where they have some crazy conventions yeah. <laughs> that basically take up the entire city. A CES, for example, takes up the entire city of Las Vegas for the week. It's um, January, isn't now, it? you might want to go because there's lots of people there. Maybe that's the reason you're going uh, into Vegas, but it can be hard to find a hotel, for example. Okay. Now we've got a question from Mary in Philadelphia, and she wants to know, she says they're planning a trip to the Grand Canyon for the end of uh, May 2014, unless she's got a time machine. I suspect it's May 2016. And she's asking, (laughs) is it cheaper to fly on a weekday versus a Sunday? And she also wants a direct flight to Phoenix from Philadelphia but she's thinking it might be cheaper to fly to Vegas and drive. Well, first of all, I don't know that you can get a direct flight uh, to uh, the Grand Canyon. It's really surrounded by very small uh, Yeah, there is an airport, actually. The airport code is GCN. It only has a handful of very small flights. And by the way, you don't want to pay airport code Jeopardy with me. Um, (laughs) But... um, the uh, it's the only subject whenever I watch Jeopardy, I like airport codes for 500, Alex. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so most people will fly into e- either Las Vegas or Phoenix. Uh, you know, direct flights from Phoenix to Philadelphia aren't that hard to find because that's a former U- both of those are U.S. Airways now uh, American Airlines hubs. So there's going to be mm-hmm. plenty of nonstops between them. They may not be the cheapest you want. So certainly the cheapest days of fly are Tuesday. Wednesday and Saturday. So if you're planning on doing that, and by the way, you even on half your trip, if you want to leave on a Monday, Friday, or Sunday and return on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, you'll get half the benefit. So that's certainly something. Uh, as far as May uh, 2016 uh, is concerned, you certainly don't want to shop any earlier than about three months beforehand. So that puts you in the January timeframe, late January timeframe to start shopping for that. We'll start to see some tickets drop. Um, you know, there's not as much of a big deal domestically, uh, seasonal pricing like we see with international flights. Yeah. Uh, but you want to start shopping at that three month mark. Absolutely don't buy your ticket any later. In this case, if you're leaving in May, 30 days in advance. You want to be outside of that 30-day window, um, and you'll be able to find plenty of nonstops. That typical price uh, should be in the range. If you do that, the earlier in May, the better, the cheaper it's going to be on Mm -hmm. Tuesday to Tuesday. I've seen prices as low as $230 round trip right now. Prices without even looking are in the $370 to $80 range. So that's sort of a range, about $150 range, as long as you don't procrastinate. And uh, as you can tell, you know, as far as flying to Vegas and driving, um, you know, I actually have uh, have done both. Um, and, you know, it sort of depends on what part of the Grand Canyon you actually want to go to <laughs> because it's a pretty big canyon, as yeah. noted by its name. <laughs> so depending on if you want to go on the far southern side, if that's where you mostly want to stay or the far northern side, it could be actually better to fly into Vegas, depending on, on what you want to do. So um, so be sure and understand that, that there's a big difference between those two. To. In general, most people fly in, into Phoenix and do it that way. Um, but a lot of people do do it from Las Vegas as well. So I think it's about instead of six of one, half a dozen the other, it's about seven of one and five of the other. And, you know, if they fly into Las Vegas, they get to go to Las Vegas and maybe they'll see you and uh, play some poker with you. <laughs> well, they'll see Tamuel, who just flew in from Belfast, Northern <laughs> there Ireland. There you go. <laughs> so they can, they can catch up and, and learn a little bit of, with, about, with, uh, with the Irish brogue. As you can tell, uh, Rick likes to answer questions and he knows the answers to virtually anything to, having to do with airfare. So if you've got a question, please let us know at customer.service at faircompare.com. 
Yeah, love to hear from you. Don't forget that we also have our adventurous app from Fair Compare on both yeah. Google Play and the the App Store. So check that out. Just type in Fair Compare and search for our new app. Give it a try. I noticed five new events uh, today as I was looking at it. Um, it it's on, on my bucket list. And you can also uh, find this podcast, the video podcast, on several sources, including iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and some other platforms as well. Some come check it out and send us a note. Well, we'd love to talk about something that you're interested in and we're going to continue to talk a little bit about the news answer some questions and uh, hopefully help people uh, not make the same mistakes that we've made over the years of flying so and appreciate it great podcast today and we'll see you on the next one bye, bye.